Hey there, beautiful people. So you've watched the video on Le Chatelier's principle. So let's do an example problem so that you can apply the notes in a format that will look like something you might see on an assessment. So let's look at each of these situations individually. So let's look at the adding N2. So if we're adding N2, that means we are increasing the concentration of N2 right here. Let me change my color. Make it nice and red. Okay, so if we are increasing the concentration of this. So that means that N2 is going to increase. Now it doesn't say how much it's going to increase. So we're going to just assume that we've added enough N2 to increase the amount of N2. Now, as it says in the notes, if you add a reactant, the reaction will shift to the right to make more product to use up the excess that we just added. So our reaction will shift to the right to increase the amount of NH3. So our amount of NH3 is going to go up. Now, in order to make that NH3, there, the H2 has to react with the N2. Now, since we're not touching the concentration of H2 initially, the H2 is going to start to get used up. And so since the H2 will get used up, it will decrease. I apologize for my terrible arrows. Okay, so our H2 is going to decrease. So when you add a reactant, the reaction will shift in the opposite direction, meaning towards the products in that direction, to make more reactant to use up, I'm sorry, make more product to use up what they just added. So that's the first one. Now we're going to add NH3. So if we're adding NH3, our NH3 amount will go up. And if it's using, um, sorry, so all that excess has to get used up, so it's going to go in the opposite direction. So our shift will be to the left. Now in order to use up that NH3, we're going to have to produce the reactants. Our N2 is going to get made, and our H2 is going to get made. So all three of the things go up in this case. Increased temperature. Okay, so increased temperature, we have to go over here. And we're looking at this delta H value. So delta H is the same thing of Q, but it applies to chemical reactions. Now, we remember from our thermochemistry unit that the negative sign tells us that this is exothermic. So that means that this is the same thing as saying plus heat on this side. Now that we know where heat is, we're going to treat it like a chemical in the reaction. So I'm increasing heat. So if I'm increasing my heat, then my reaction is going to shift away from that thing to use it up. So my shift will be to the left. That means anything on the left-hand side will go up, and anything on the right-hand side will go down. Okay, let's move over to H2. So I'm removing H2. So the amount of H2 is going to go down. Now this is a little bit different. Now I've used up H2. I've taken it away. I have to make more to balance it out. So in order to make more, the reaction is going to shift towards the H2, which will make the N2 go up. And my reaction shifts to the left. Now what will happen with the NH3? Well, in order to make N2 and H2, I have to use up NH3. So therefore, the NH3 will go down. Increased pressure. OK, now this is a little bit different. I have to look at my states of matter, because remember that pressure and volume changes only impact gases. So I look, and I can see I have a gas, a gas, and a gas. So everything's gases here. So that's great. So now, let's look to see how many moles I have on either side. My left-hand side has 1 and 2 and 3 H2s, which gives me 4 moles. My left-hand side only has the 2 moles of NH3. So I have more moles of gas on the left, fewer moles of gas on the right. So an increase of pressure will cause my molecules to get to bump into each other more because think of it like a piston. I am pressing down on that piston and smushing them into a smaller area, compressing them. So by compressing them, I have to reduce the number of collisions. So that means the reaction will shift to the side with the fewest number of moles. Since 2 is less than 4, my reaction is going to shift to the right. Anything on the right will go up, and anything on the left will go down. 
Now let's look at volume. When I've got a volume, that's like taking something from a small container and putting it into a big container. And so therefore, the molecules before were crammed in here, but now they can spread out. Well, and if they're gonna spread out, that means they're gonna have fewer collisions. If they're gonna have fewer collisions, that means I need more stuff. So if I need more stuff, my reaction will shift to the side with more moles of gas. The left-hand side has more moles of gas, so my reaction will shift to the left. Anything on the left will go up, anything on the right will go down. And that is how you do a Le Chatelier's principle problem.